Hallelujah, praise the Lamb. Hallelujah, praise the Lamb. Okay, so, today is Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. And it's 11.27 p.m. And I I don't Google. I use Bing. How many feet are in a mile? One mile is 5,280 feet. So, I was curious because today I swam 36 laps in a um, pool that is 36 feet long. So, I took 5,280 and divided it by 36 to see how many laps it would take for me to swim a mile. Oh my stars! 146 point, all those sixes and seven, so 147 laps, basically. So then, I said, okay, well, if I swam 36 laps, what is 36 divided by 147? That is... Point two four for for the almost a quarter of a mile. Okay, so that means that in order for me to swim a mile, I need to swim a hundred and forty seven laps in that pool. Yowza! Today I swam thirty six, and um, I was pretty tired. So tomorrow, I'm going to try to swim 72, which will be close to half a mile. Well, let's see. Let's do 72. 72 divided by 147 is 0.48. So maybe I should shoot for 76 or 70, let's say 76 is no let's see 77 it's probably going to be more like 80 because let's see let's say 80 that's still not even half a mile well duh that's stupid Angela I'm you know what I'm not that I'm not that dumb so I should be able to just figure this out what is okay so eighty two divided by a hundred and forty seven equals why isn't it where's the calculator? This isn't right. This is not working. 82 divided by 147. See, that's more. Okay. I knew something was happening. Something was wrong. Divided by 147. Okay. I was closer. See, I'm kind of a math person. So, 76... Okay, 75, okay, 74, oops, 74 laps is half a mile, 74 laps is half a mile, so that would mean that 148 yeah, would be a little bit over a mile because 147 is a mile. Okay, 
So my goal is tomorrow to swim 74 laps in that pool. Today I swam 36. Yowza. And it's starting to get cool here in southwest Texas. So pray for me. It's time to read John chapter 8. I don't think I've done chat. Yeah, I have done John chapter 8. Let me see. Those are the ones that I haven't had the... I haven't done the... Um, what you call it? The, the thumbnails on yet. Let's make sure. I did. I did John chapter 8. So now we're going to read John chapter 9. Then I'm going to go to bed. I want to, you know, what was really great that after I went swimming today, um, I called and talked to my friend Henry on the phone and it was so awesome because the Holy Spirit is awesome. Thank you, Henry, for talking to me. Jesus is coming. Everybody spread the word. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this down thinking about swimming 74 laps was that what it was yeah 74 laps I wonder if I can do it well I guess I could do it if I stay in the pool long enough <clears throat> and then so I have to work up to a mile which is 147 when I was when I was a kid I was in competitive swimming and uh, I'm sure that I could swim a mile easy. Easy. I mean, we used to swim. Yeah. It's, I'm, but I'm old now. <laughs> okay. John chapter 9. Praise the Lord. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that was born blind, that, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has the neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Wow, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing to think that that all the people out there that are blind or deaf, or they can't speak, or all of these children with autism, or all these all of their all of the afflictions that people have, that they were born that way so that so that the works of God could be made manifest in them in the last days. That that God was going to give people, He was going to fill them with the Holy Spirit, like He did with the apostles. Where they could lay hands on all of them and heal them. Wouldn't that just be something? I believe that that's going to happen. Folks. And I believe that's why the Lord's going to put me on the road. We're going to start healing people. And you know. It says in Timothy that. Women aren't supposed to be. Leaders of churches. But it doesn't say anything about. Women not being able to heal. Women not being being filled with the Holy Spirit, and have the and have the gifts of healing, and that and to show the the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, because it says all it also says that in the last days that God is going to pour out His Spirit on His sons and daughters. And yes, I'm 53 years old, but. Um, I know that God is is going to renew my body and my strength and and everything and uh, I could be well. I already know that in my last job I could I outwork the twenty somethings ten to one. So as far as that goes, as far as stamina and work ethic and all that kind of stuff, I can already outwork the twenty somethings because they're lazy. But anyway. But my body right now is not strong. Okay. 
But I think that's going to be cool that, that um, I think this is going to happen again. Verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay in the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the, with the clay. And said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came, seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him, but he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thy, thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam, Siloam, I think it's called what it's called, and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his, his sight. He said unto him, he put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed, and I, and I do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. God. They were such... Mm, mm, mm. We, we, we must not work on the Sabbath day. There's no way Jesus could have possibly healed the man, because it was the Sabbath day, so he's not of God. Others said... How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a, divi a division among them. I guess so. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that it had received his sight. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he, doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. <laughs> In other words, he's grown, ask him. These words spake his parents, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, He is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that... Whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him. Ooh, look, there's a bug on my... Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. Oh. We know that God spake unto Moses, and for this fellow we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is. There's another bug. Where are these bugs coming from? From whence he is. And yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the word began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. 
They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they cast him out, and when he found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they see which... That the, for judgment, I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be, but might, might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should not see, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. <laughs> Let me read 41 again. Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. Wow. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming. Everybody be ready.